Welcome to working uh, with a DPS, a double page spread, with InDesign in order to put the artwork together. What I've got here is just a single image file, and I've got on the left hand side just my InDesign file here. On the right is because I've actually got the InDesign file open, currently in use, this file will appear, and it's basically to help save your life sometimes um, if the file or document crashes and this can hold that information and use it to retrieve anything that's lost. Now you need to save all the time just like every other document but this can be a bit of a lifesaver. It will disappear once you close your document but I've currently got this open. Let's just go and have a look and I'm going to look at the file that I've got open at the moment. Just a double page spread here. Now just to kick this off there's just a couple of things that I want to work with. Um, I'm going to stay with the RGB image throughout the whole workflow of this document. Now that's a little bit strange. If you're working with print, everything should normally be converted image-wise to CMYK. Now the reason I'm not going to do this is this document can have a later use or it may be translated even as is into a digital output um, such as an iPad which really requires you to stay in the RGB workflow. Or you may be printing to a particular output, should it be um, some sort of a coffee table uh, one-off production, uh, a specialised book where you're required also to stay in the RGB workflow for the imagery. The only time you really need to go to CMYK is actually if you're taking it to um, print and that's all it's going to. But what we're going to do with the PDF workflow we're going to use within this document is we're going to do all the conversion to the color in the PDF itself. And we'll cover that in a later movie. Now just to get on with the first thing I want to look at is basically working in the RGB workflow is making sure that our image has a profile. Now we're going to want to do that when we're working with um, an ICC profile, um, International Color um, corporation, consortium, um, where we need the profile to help co the conversion process. So I'm just going to select my image here and I'm just going to control click on it or right click on it. And I'll just try that once more. Okay, and click on the image. And now I'm just gone down out of view here, um, unfortunately, but if you'll see right at the bottom here, you'll see graphics. Okay. Making sure you click on the image, right click on the image. So it's gone out of view, but the graphics essentially flows over to the other side. If you roll over and you'll see image color settings. And if you just click on that. What I've got here is a little image color setting dialog box that comes up. And this is where I can set an ICC profile. And I'm just going to set it to Adobe RGB 1998. Now, it's good to check with your printers. They may prefer to work in an RGB workflow as the technology changes. They may prefer you stay with CMYK. But check with them right at the, right at the onset of the job. But I, this is what I'm going to use for this particular output because I'm going to go to PDF artwork at the end. And I'm going to go to OK. So I've set my RGB image. I've set a profile for it now, an ICC profile. Now, the second thing I just wanted to cover within this movie is... I've got my black text on a white background, and that might be the design I want here. Of course, you might play with a number of designs. I'm going to click on my layers here, spring that up. Um, apart from having a white background, I've also got a uh, black background here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, just for the sake of outputting this job with the correct format, I'm going to stay with a black background for this particular design. I just want to show you how you can actually set your colors up to get a richer, better job. We're going to use something that's called rich black. So just under the window here, I'm just going to go and bring up my um, color, which should just be at the top here under color, and I'm just going to going to go to the swatches here. Now you also notice that I'm currently in the printing and proofing mode. Now that's going to be handy for a lot of things we're doing in the output of this particular job. However, at any time of course you can just jump between whatever you want. But um, I've just accessed the colors here. What I want to do, this is definitely a black color here. Um, but if I were to, to look at the color itself, it's just 100% black. Now that's great. 
But you're going to find when you print, depending on the quality of the printer, the size of the rollers they work with, some print jobs are better than others, especially with a bigger roller, better coverage, a cleaner, smoother finish. This rich black, or this black here, you think looks great in the artwork. It may not look so good in the final proof. You might get little roller effects, or it's just not a full coverage that you want. And with large areas like this, this is where it's great to use rich black. So I'm just going to go back to my swatches here. And with the black selected, I'm just going to click on a new color here. And I'm just going to double click on that. And I'm going to call it rich. If I spell it correctly, just rich. And type it correctly as well, rich black. Okay, so what I've got here is still a spelling mistake, rich black, but I've got 100% black here. In order to get rich black, you don't slide everything to 100%. That can result in just a little bit overkill and um, just over-inked um, imagery at the end, which actually doesn't produce a very good result because it's just too much ink on there. To get the rich black, an ideal setting, in fact, it's probably good to set with your actual printer to make sure it's what they prefer to work with, but just a standard setting here is 60 for cyan, 40 for magenta, and just 20 for yellow, making sure that what you've got here is still the 100% for the black. Now I can click preview, but it's really not going to change on screen. Black just looks black on the screen, but it certainly doesn't when you output the job here. So I'm just going to go OK now. And just make sure that um, I'm no longer clicked on just the black, but I'm on the rich black now. And OK. So that's going to give you a much better job in the output where you're going to actual print. Now just for the digital output, then black is fine. But print, um, in terms of taking it through to an output for prepress through PDF or just straight to print from the InDesign document that you hand over, is still a good way to work with. All other fonts, because you don't want to end up with um, off-registration um, effects or blurry type, that will just stay as black. Um, this is simply a knockout um, in order to stay white, which is the paper color, but the black itself uses a range of colors to give you a beautiful, rich coverage.